Okay, so in today's video, we're doing something that I've actually had planned for a long time, probably over a year or so, and I just haven't got around to doing it, and that is testing the UV output on all the bulbs that are currently being used in this room. And I also have a whole bunch of bulbs. I've actually never thrown out any UV bulbs. Anytime I replace them after the 12-month period, I throw them in my storage room because I always knew one day it would be I would come back to them with my solar meter and test them to see if there's anything left in them. And if there is still life in them, then I can use them. I'll show you guys how we can do that in a second. And I recommend doing that as well if you have old bulbs. Bulbs. Don't throw them out because one day if you do end up testing them, you may be throwing out money. So this is hopefully one way we can eventually save money by testing the bulbs and getting more life out of them than just what the package says. So the first thing that needs to happen is I need to buy a solar meter because I don't have one. So that's what we're going to do first and then we'll carry on with the rest of the video. And before we do that, welcome back to the Animals at Home channel. If you're new here, my name is Dylan Parent. I am the creator of this channel as well as the host of the Animals at Home podcast. If you want to learn more about how to advance your reptile husbandry, make sure you check out the podcast. You can find it on any podcasting app and subscribe to the channel on YouTube. Okay, let's go spend 260 bucks. All right, so I'm on Amazon now and I have the solar meter model 6.5 pulled up. That is the model you want. There are other models of solar meters out there, but they give you different units of measurement. I think the other ones give you wavelength and whatnot. That's confusing. The 6.5 is what gives you UVI, the ultraviolet index, which is exactly what we're looking for. That's the measurement we're looking for when we're talking about replicating natural environments within the enclosures. So this is the model you want. It actually was not a piece of reptile equipment. It's been rebranded that way now, but it, so many of us were buying this piece of equipment that they realized, you know, the reptile people, th there's a market for that. So they have rebranded it, but it is a great piece of equipment. You can see that it is quite expensive. It's $254 Canadian. I think you can pick them up for around 180 or 200 American. And I don't think everybody needs to rush out and buy one of these. I think eventually it's a good tool to have. We definitely don't want that to be a barrier of entry when it comes to owning reptiles. We certainly don't want people to think they need to own a $250 piece of equipment to buy one, you know, to own one bearded dragon. But it is a good thing to have. And hopefully eventually it does end up helping us save money because it will allow us to recycle old bulbs and even use bulbs longer than the 12-month lifespan that you should really be changing them. So let's purchase this right now. And actually, thankfully, I have a whole bunch of Amazon gift cards totally up to $250. So we're going to use all of that today. And basically, I'm just left with having to pay the tax of $35, which is a little bit annoying, but we're going to pay that anyway. And let's place the order and it will be here in a couple of days for me and one second for you. So I want to keep this video relatively short. We're just going to whip through each of the enclosures that I have and use the solar meter to see where the UV eyes are sitting and see if there's any adjustments or fresh bulbs that are needed. So you should not use this video as a guide to whether or not you're using your particular UVB bulb correctly. Make sure you're following the packaging that you have. So that's the distance from the basking zone as well as the replacement time. Most bulbs have a replacement period of about 12 months. So if you don't have a solar meter, make sure you're following that. And actually, Pete Hawkins over at Reptile Networks did an interesting study a few years ago where he compared a few different brands of bulbs and how long they lasted over about a 12 or 13 month period. So I'll put that in the description below as well. And I think he's actually redoing that study as well. So that might be something you want to keep up with. But for now, if you don't have a solar meter, of course, follow the manufacturer packaging. And let's jump into this. Let's see where we are. So as I've mentioned many times on the podcast, one of the best, easiest ways you can find the UVI for the particular species that you're keeping is just an Arcadia's website. So you go to Arcadia, hit the lighting guide, and then you can type your species in there. And it will indicate roughly where your UVI should be at the basking zone. So keep in mind, all my enclosures are set up with the shade method in mind. That means there is a designated basking zone at the correct UVI. And then the rest of the enclosure or a large portion of the enclosure is going to have much lower UVI all the way down to zero UVI. So you want to give the animal shade, give them an opportunity to get away from the UV. No animal is going to want to spend the entire day under the sun, just like we don't want to to spend the entire day under the sun. These animals are amazing at self-regulating, but if you don't give them the opportunity to self-regulate by giving them a UV gradient, then you can run into some problems. So we're going to start with my giant day gecko enclosure. And as you can see, the UVI for them is roughly between three and four. And I think a little higher is probably okay as well. But right off the bat, I do have some issues here because most of my horizontal basking platforms are only around the two to three low threes to even into the ones. So I need to bump that ball back. So we'll make that adjustment a little bit later. And you can see I have this vertical branch here that has a very high UV index because it's basically sitting right underneath the bulb. So I'm going to just try to push that ball back a little bit. I'm not too worried about having a spot of a very high UV index because even if she spends time there, it's not like she's trapped in that zone. She's welcome to move in on and off it. And she does spend some time basking on that vertical stick as well. Day geckos do spend a lot of time in that vertical position in the wild. That's why I have those vertical branches in there. 
So I'm not super worried about having one spot about with way too high UV, but I do want to make sure those back horizontal branches are getting a little bit more. Oh, and before I move on, this enclosure has a Pro T5 6% UVB bulb from Arcadia, and it is about nine months old. So moving on to my Cresta Gecko, as you can see, we have a Shade Dweller, which is the 7% UVB bulb from Arcadia, and this one is also nine months old. And for this species, we're looking for a range between one and two, a relatively low UV species. Obviously, they're nocturnal and crepuscular. They're not spending a ton of time in the blazing sun. And judging by the meter, we're kind of right in range. A lot of the low ones, 1.5, 1.6, a few under one. So that is actually perfect for right now. This ball has, still has some life in it. I don't need to spend any time changing it. And he does come out and bask on these platforms probably at least once or twice per week. All right, so now on to my boas. So both of my boas also have the Arcadia 7% Shade Dweller, and the bulbs are actually over a year old at this point. So we're getting close to the point in time where I need to replace them. I will be placing orders uh, in my next reptile order. I'll obviously order some Shade Dweller bulbs. Now this top enclosure is actually still okay. It's kind of around the 1.5 to 1.5 at the basking zone, or 1.2-ish at the basking zone. But you can see it is starting to diminish its output. Now the bottom enclosure is actually a little bit different. It's even a little bit lower. You can see at the basking zone, it's actually below one so 0 0.5 0 0.6 0 0.7 so this bulb is starting to get pretty weak and it is time to replace it and fortunately i do have an old bulb a shade dweller bulb that we're going to test a little bit later so we can see if i can switch these bulbs and then of course when i order my next reptile order shade dwellers will be included Okay, so onto my Brazilian rainbow boa enclosure. And as you can see, again, we're looking between two and three UVI. Now this bulb is brand new. I put this in in the fall when I redid this enclosure. So if you want to watch that video, you can. So as you can see, the bulb is still super fresh. It's reading, you know, 2.2, 2.3 at the basking zone, which is perfect. You know, and, and this is just showing you don't necessarily need a solar meter. And these are all Arcadia bulbs and I've just followed the packaging as best as possible. And they are producing the UVI that the bulbs claim or the packaging claims. So that that can be kind of maybe a sigh of relief for you if you don't want to go out and spend the $250. Now, the last enclosure here is my jungle carpet python. And this is the one I was actually worried about because I have a 6% T8 here. And he, he does bask very close to the bulb, just the way it is set up. So I thought this would be much too high. But it ended up working out perfectly. The basking zone sitting sort of between that 1.5 and 2.5 it's actually tough to measure the basking zone exactly in this enclosure just by the nature of the device the sensor is on top and I can't get the sensor to be exactly where the snake is basking if I do hold the meter where the snake is basking you know there's a three or four inches closer to the ball that's going to be just because that's the height of the meter so I'm kind of holding it on an angle here to roughly measure so anyway the basking zone is around two you have to remember the screen does block out a lot of the UV so that is where I'm losing some UV there but in the end like I said it created a basking zone that is perfect now this animal basks under this light every single day but I'm not entirely convinced it has anything to do with UV it might but I have a feeling it has something to do with the intensity of the visible light that's coming from the jungle dawn. I'm going to do more work on that in a little bit. I'm going to try to do a video on that topic because it's really interesting. So that's all I'm going to say. I don't want to go too far into the topic because I really, it's totally out of my zone of knowledge at this point, but definitely something interesting to look into in the future. And here I've just revisited my giant day gecko enclosure and I bumped the ball back a little bit just to make sure the UV was actually hitting those horizontal platforms. And now you can see it's kind of into the low threes, into the fours rather than the twos and the ones. Okay, so as I've said, I haven't thrown out any UV bulbs in the past because I always knew that one day I'd come back and test them. So I have a few bulbs to test here. So the first bulb up is a Reptisun by Zoomed, and this is the 5.0 UV. And this is what I labeled as an expired bulb. So I probably used it for 12 months. And as you can see here, the UV is still pretty strong. There's still three, 3.5, low threes. Now, again, don't use this as a recommendation that you can use the Reptisun for longer than the packaging says. You should only do that if you have a solar meter. But I just want to show you that, you know, these bulbs can hold on to their UV output for maybe longer. And this is where some of the money saving can come in. So next up is an Arcadia 12% UVB bulb that again was used for about a year, I believe, as well. And the UV here is still putting out tons of output. We're into this sort of 6.5, 6.7. So lots of room here. So I can definitely use this bulb. This is a T8 bulb. These are all T8 bulbs, by the way. So I can use this bulb in the future. And then here I'm testing an old Shade Dweller bulb, the 7% UV that again was used for 12 months. And this bulb is still throwing off quite a bit of UV. We're kind of into the 2.5 low three range which is great so this bulb is actually has a little bit more output than the bulb that i currently have in my lower bow enclosure so we're going to swap those bulbs now we might as well and like i said I will, I will order some new ones at some point so again i don't want to stress enough please don't use this as an opportunity to say oh i'm, I'm going to use my uvb bulbs for 13 or 14 months because dylan's video had that but 
what this should show you is don't throw out your UV bulbs. Switch them at that 12 month period when the packaging says, but hold on to them because if you do eventually get to a point where you buy a solar meter, you can do like I have done here. And now I have three or four bulbs that are still perfectly fine to use and I can implement them into an enclosure in the future. And there we go. As you can see, we were kind of in that 0.7 range before. Now we're at 1.3, 1.4. So there is more UV there. And the next day, she's actually basking under the bulb, which is pretty interesting. I mean, that is anecdotal and could be totally coincidental, but I thought I would just show you this cool video for basking anyway. All right, I think we're going to end the video there. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this just quick, simple video. If you are interested in picking yourself up a solar meter, there is a link in the description below. And if you aren't subscribed to the channel, make sure you do subscribe so you don't miss any future podcasts or videos. I will catch you guys in the next one.